my name is Anup Prabhu. I'm a gastroenterologist here at Roswell Park Conference of Cancer Center. So Barrett's esophagus is the esophagus's uh, response to chronic reflux. So essentially the stomach creates copious amounts of acid. That's what's necessary to help with digestion. Um, but the esophagus, which is the conduit for the food to get to the stomach, is not well suited to deal with that acid. In response to chronic reflux or acid irritation of the esophagus, the esophagus will often change its lining. Uh, and the name for that change uh, is Barrett's esophagus. One of the main contributors to Barrett's esophagus is GERD. GERD is short for gastroesophageal reflux disease, which is a condition where acid will reflux into the esophagus. Not all individuals who suffer from reflux or GERD develop Barrett's, and not all individuals with Barrett's had reflux or GERD. Um, so it can be challenging to identify the people who are at risk. In general, guidelines recommend that uh, a screening upper endoscopy should be performed to assess for Barrett's if individuals have reflux and other risk factors. In general, Barrett's in and of itself is relatively asymptomatic, um, but typically we're identifying Barrett's esophagus in individuals who are undergoing an endoscopy for another reason. So they're having reflux, problems with swallowing, uh, chest discomfort, heartburn, those types of symptoms. Barrett's esophagus is considered a precancerous condition though the vast majority of individuals with Barrett's esophagus do not actually develop cancer. On average, for every thousand people in a year, approximately three to five of those individuals will develop cancer, so a very, very low chance. There are certain risk factors that can increase the likelihood that your Barrett's will become cancerous, particularly if there's presence of what's called dysplasia, which is a sign of advanced uh, Barrett's esophagus in individuals who have high-grade dysplasia, meaning dysplasia that's very close to but not quite cancer, uh, the chances of becoming cancerous uh, can be upwards of 15 to 20%. The most straightforward management of Barrett's esophagus is the initiation of a PPI, or what's called a proton pump inhibitor. Those are acid medications that are often available over the counter, but by prescription as well. And those are meant to decrease the reflux, and as a result, decrease the rate at which the Barrett's esophagus changes any further towards cancer. If a patient then shows signs of dysplasia, either low grade or high grade dysplasia, uh, then typically what we do is perform treatment to eradicate that Barrett's. Typically the way we treat that is through a procedure called radiofrequency ablation. Um, that's a procedure where we uh, apply essentially heat or cautery on the Barrett's esophagus to essentially cause a bad sunburn. Um, that lining will kind of slough off and get replaced by tissue that's not precancerous. In some situations, if Barrett's has progressed to cancer and it's very early on, um, we're able to actually remove the cancer via the scope. In other words, without a surgery, without chemotherapy, uh, and provide a curative treatment with the scope alone. I think that in general, when you're getting treated for a complex disease such as Barrett's esophagus, um, it's always good to be at a center where there's uh, experience and volume. Uh, and in fact, there are data supporting that in guidelines that if you have Barrett's esophagus that's advanced, um, they should go to a center of excellence or areas where um, there are multiple uh, providers involved. Um, the management of Barrett's esophagus can be multidisciplinary. Um, there's some overlap between endoscopy and surgery. Um, and so having a surgical oncologist and an endoscopic oncologist in the same team uh, is beneficial to the patient. Like I mentioned previously, we're able to remove cancers earlier. Uh, so otherwise, individuals who would otherwise uh, potentially get a, a surgery where part of their esophagus was removed, um, we may be able to uh, save a surgery and perform an organ sparing intervention.